think you're going to be challenged this morning. Ruth chapter 2, beginning in verse 8. When you got it, say, I got it. It says, then Boaz said to Ruth, you will listen, my daughter, will you not? Do not go to glean in another field, nor go from here. Tell your neighbor, don't go from here. It says, but stay close by my young women. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap and go after them. How many know that's some discipleship right there? Go after them. It says, have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? It says, and when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. So she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground and said to him, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? And look at what Boaz said. This is the part I really want you to catch. And Boaz answered and said to her, it has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you have left your father and your mother in the land of your birth and have come to a people whom you did not know before. Here's, here's the part. Watch this. The Lord repay your work. And a full reward. Someone say, full reward. Ooh. Say, I'm getting a full reward. Be given to you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. We pray you minister. Let our hearts be ready to receive your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everyone said, amen. amen. Before you see it, give your neighbor a high five. Time is going to be good today. It's going to be good today. When's the last time you heard your pastor speak from the book of Ruth? Someone say never. never. Say never, ever. That's how you know this morning the message is from the Lord. But when you really look at the book of Ruth, it is one of the most beautiful books ever written in the Bible. People believe that it was written by Samuel the prophet. I'll point you to that fact later. But when we look at the book of Ruth, I I don't want you to get it twisted. It's not a woman's book. Now, I know ladies, you've got sermons out of Ruth. Come on, somebody. You got sermons about Boaz. And you tell the women, don't date Boaz's brothers. But it's not a woman's book. The book of Ruth is a book about redemption, renewal, and restoration. It's a story, hear this, about God's plans towards us and a story of how our hearts should be towards God's plan. Because how many know he has a plan towards us, but we must also have a heart towards his plan? And here's what I want to say to you this morning is if you've ever had hard times in your life, How many of you have had some hard times? Then read the story of Naomi and Ruth. Read read the story of Naomi and Ruth. If you've ever had any hard times or you find yourself in hard times right now, go ahead and read about Naomi and Ruth. And what you will see is that when life turns famine into a funeral, God can turn your funeral into a feast. That's good news for somebody. Because we've been living in some very difficult times. That's why some of you are in church this morning. Because you say, Pastor, I came to church this morning, and I got to tell you, I'm not here because my life is together. I'm here because there's some things in my life that are falling apart. But let me give you some good news is that God can turn your funeral into a feast. And whenever I see God do miracles like that, because how many know when you read the story of Ruth and what God did for her, it was a miracle. How many of you love to receive miracles from the Lord? It, It was a miracle. And whenever I see these miracles happen, whether it was for Abraham, whether it was for, you know, Moses, whether it was for David, I always ask myself this question, God, how did you do it for them? God, what was it that activated that miracle? How how was it that they were able to break through? Do you ask those same questions when you read the word? And when I look right here at Ruth, I say, God, how did you do it for Ruth? How did you turn that funeral into a feast? And it was the Lord that spoke to me at 2 in the morning, and he told me this. He gave me a word that 
you don't hear in church too often anymore. And what he said to me is, I turn Ruth's funeral into a feast through something called loyalty. Ooh. So you won't get a lot of claps on it. You won't get a lot of claps on it because the world we live in today, this cancel culture. Come on now. We live in what's called cancel culture. They're trying to, they're trying to cancel the history. Come on, somebody. And let me tell you, if I've learned anything about revival, is God is not trying to cancel what he did in the past. God is trying to do it all over again. Come on, somebody. We're not trying to make new history. God's trying to repeat history. Can I hear an amen? The same revival they had in the upper room is the same revival we could have now. The same way he parted the Red Sea for the children of Israel is the same way he can part the Red Sea in your life now. We don't serve a God that cancels history. We serve a God that says, I can do it again. How many would love to see the Lord do it again within somebody's life? Come on, clap if you want to see him do it again. And sometimes I wonder if the word loyalty has been canceled from the English dictionary. Because it seems like Everywhere you look in the world, there's nothing but disloyalty. You see disloyalty in sports. You spend your whole life, a city spends their whole life, the whole city's rooting for a team, and that team leaves the city. I don't know if that applies, but it's definitely. You see disloyalty in sports. You see disloyalty with athletes. There was a time. In days gone by, maybe, maybe this generation doesn't know, but in the days gone by where if a player was drafted by a team, they ended their career with that team because they wanted to be loyal to that team, loyal to that organization that picked them. We see uh, disloyalty in marriage. You know, for the first time in history, the divorce rate is higher in the church than it is in the world. Loyalty. I looked it up in the dictionary. And guess what? Good news. Loyalty's still there. <laughs> Loyalty is still in the Webster's dictionary. They didn't get a hold of that. Cancel culture couldn't get a hold of that. Maybe there's a generation that's never read it. But it's still there. Someone say it's still there. The word loyalty means a strong feeling of support or allegiance. The reason I bring out this word to you today is because when Naomi lost her husband and her two sons, the husbands of Orpha and Ruth, she tells Ruth to part ways with her. She says, Ruth, I got nothing for you. I got nothing to give you. Just go back home. I have nothing to offer you. I'm too old. I, I can't marry again. I can't have children. I, I'm at the end of my days. You know, there's, there's four seasons of life, a season of thrills. A season of bills. A season of pills. And then a season of wills. Naomi looked at her young daughter-in-law and says, baby girl, I'm, in, I'm just finishing up my pill season and I'm going into writing my will season. But you're still in the thrill season. You're still young. You can still do something. But what we see is one of the most beautiful scriptures ever written in the Bible. In Ruth chapter 1, verse 15, she says to her mother-in-law, Naomi, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. She says, for wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. She says, your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. And where I die, bury me right next to you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That's loyalty. Who can praise God for loyalty? Come on, who could really praise the Lord for loyalty? See, in spite of, Naomi, of, in, in spite of Ruth and Naomi's situation, in spite of her losses, in spite of her personal defeat, you know that Ruth remained loyal. And, and, and you say, well, pastor, why are you sharing this word? Why are you sharing this? I, I think it's an important word. I think we got to preach on stuff like this in these days. But you say, well, pastor, why are you sharing this word? Here's why I'm sharing the word. Here's what I want to tell you this morning. I'm sharing this word 
Because we live in a day where we must understand that God still rewards loyalty. Yes. Loyalty still matters. Oh, man, I'll say it again. Loyalty still matters. And God still rewards loyalty, and he still rewards people with an unwavering spirit. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, it says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. What, what is the scripture saying? What is the Hebrew writer saying? Say, listen, keep hold of the promises of God because if God gave you that promise and you hold on to it, you can be sure that the Lord is faithful to bring that promise to pass. It may not happen when you want it, but it will happen in God's timing if you don't let go of the promise and you stay loyal. Oh, I'm preaching good. I'm preaching good. Touch your neighbor and tell him, stay loyal. Touch your old man and say, be loyal. Come on, old lady, be loyal. (laughs) Notice that when you read the scripture in Hebrews, it says, and let us consider one another in order to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Think of it when the Lord speaks of holding on to the promise. He's talking about stay in church. Stay in church. Listen, I want to share this with you. Whether you're here for the first time or the thousandth and ten thousandth time. If you want to build anything great in your life, and if you want to have a successful marriage, a successful family, you want to see your children grow up to do great things, and some of you want to experience the height of spiritual success in your life, live a life of loyalty. Who agrees with your pastor? Live a life of loyalty. And and let me add to it. Can I add to it? Surround yourself with people who are loyal. Man, this message is doing better than I thought I would. If you want to be successful in anything you do, live a life of loyalty and surround yourself with loyal people. Because anything God calls you to do, brothers and sisters, it, it can, it can, whatever God calls you to do, is always too great to do with flaky and inconsistent people. Can I go there just for a split second? Anything God calls you to do is going to be bigger than you. You're not going to be able to do it by yourself. It's going to be so big, you're not going to have all the talents, you're not going to have all the gifts, you're not going to have all the resources to get it done. So if God calls you to do something great, recognize it's bigger than you. But if it's bigger than you, make sure you're not surrounded by flaky, disloyal people. I said it before and I'll say it again. You're only as good as the five best friends you have. I didn't say this in the first service, but let me say it in this service. Who's on your speed dial? Who's on your favorite phone call list? Are they loyal or are they disloyal? Are they committed or are they flaky? Oh, man, I love preaching this word this morning, man. I haven't preached like this in a long time. But what am I saying to you? God still rewards loyal people. He still rewards loyal people. You know the word friend is mentioned in the Bible 118 times? The book of Proverbs says in 1824, it says a man of many companions may come to ruin. That's what it says. Let me talk to some of you social media people. Because we live in a day where you think that all your followers on Instagram are your real friends. I came to tell you something, brothers and sisters. Your real friends aren't the friends you make on social media. Your real friends that stick are the ones that stick it with you and all hell breaks loose within your life. Come on, say amen. It says, but there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Proverbs 17, 17 says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for times of goodness. No, that's not what the Bible says. See, some of you got to read your Bible. (laughs) A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for when you're doing well. A brother is born for when you got a new car. A brother is born for when you got a new rib. Boyfriend, girlfriend for you new people. 
A brother is born from when you're on the mountaintop and everything's good in your life and you're shining like a star. And they say, look at you go. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The Bible says a brother is born for times of adversity. I could preach that to you with authority this morning. <laughs> Can you sense it? Can you sense it? Pastor Al knows what it is. I'm having fun with this word. Hey, don't get mad at me. Get mad at God. He's the one that woke me up at 2 a.m. and gave it to me. I didn't know who was going to be in church. I just tell you, the Lord told me. Listen, can you tell him a person that knows what it is to be stabbed in the back? Can I talk the truth in this place? I've had some people in my life that called me friends. Some people that have said, if you need me, I'm just a phone call away. And as long as things were good, whoo, they were there. As long as there was food on the table, they would come to the table. They'd eat their fill and take a plate home. Those times of victory. But I got to tell you something. If you want to find out who your real friends are, let the hard times come. Let the winds begin to blow and turn that picnic table over. Knock off the tablecloth. All the food is all over the floor. The silverware is all over the place. Knock over your little red punch. Your cake flipped over and is on the grass. Can I hear an amen? Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow and knock out your picnic and throw your food off the table. And let me tell you this. The person that sticks around to help you clean up your mess, that's your real friend. That's your real brother or sister born for adversity. Can I hear an amen? Thank God for loyal people. Thank God for people who stick it out with you, not when you're just on the mountaintop, but when you're in the valley. Come on, somebody. I, I think it's time that we begin to call the loyal people out. I think it's time that we begin to tell the loyal people, stand up. I think it's time to say, hey, loyal people, get ready, because God still blesses loyalty. God still raises up loyal workers. God still raises up loyal leaders. Ooh, my God. God bless the marriages that have made it 20 years. God bless the marriages that have made it 25 years. You, it might have been hard for you. You say, oh, pastor, man, you don't know what I've been through. But guess what? God's been with you in every season. He's been with you in every storm. Woo! Somebody in this church say loyalty. loyalty. Let me tell you, if you want loyal friends, you got to be loyal yourself. I love this section right here. You guys are cheering me on. You were good in the first service, too. You know, to be loyal is to still believe. To be loyal is to still believe in the vision. Still believe in the dream. Still believe in the hope. Still believe in what God has shown you. And I believe we're living in a time right now where God is looking for people who still believe. They're loyal because they still believe. A recent Pew Research study showed that one third of people who were once in church, committed to the house of God, committed to the plan of God in their life, that those people no longer attend church. It has even been said in a recent study that 75% of people who were in church in 2019 no longer attend any kind of church today. What happened to you? Now, I know you're here, but I'm going to give it to you so you can give it to them. Come on, who, who thinks I ought to let this one out? What, what happened to you? What happened to them? I, I, I believe in the church because I thank God for the church. You know why? Because when I was in my darkest hour, and my family wasn't even there for me, you ain't saying nothing to me. You, you ain't. See, family ain't always blood. Sometimes it's the blood of Jesus that makes you family. And when I was in my darkest hour, and when I was in my deepest pain, and when I was in my lowest pit, it was the church that came and pulled me out of the pits. I know I got some witnesses here today. 
I got everything I got today from the church. I was saved in the church. I was discipled in the church. I was trained in the church. I got my dignity back in the church. I learned how to talk in the church. I learned how to dress in the church. I learned about my gifts in the church. I found my woman of God in the church. I had my babies in the church. I made lifelong friends in the church. When I was in my darkest hour, it was the church that came to my aid. But I got to say this, man. Some of you, maybe you're not here today, but you're watching online, and you still haven't come to church. The church was there for you in your darkest hour, but why can't you be there for your church when your church is in its darkest hour? That seem hard? Does that seem hard? I mean, does that seem too hard? You're like, oh, that's hard. What, what do you say? Well, shouldn't we be fair? Yeah. I'm, getting, I'm getting some good claps. This section, you guys are keeping me alive this morning. This section could help me a little bit more, but you guys are doing real good. Shouldn't we keep it real? Shouldn't we be fair? When the church was there for us, when the church is in its darkest hour, why can't we be there for the house of God? Now, I'm not complaining. We're blessed. But maybe there's another church out there that you haven't been there for your pastor. You haven't been there for your leaders. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Listen, I'm blessed. Don't, don't feel sorry for me. I'm good. I'm real good. I'm super blessed. But maybe I'm preaching for another pastor or another group of leaders that they're doing all they can to keep the church alive. They're doing all they can fighting that spiritual warfare. They're doing all they can to win souls. But there's people that you're still on the bench, and you need to get back in the game this morning. If I can help one pastor, I'll do it. If I can help one church out there, I'll do it. I still believe. You know why God blessed Ruth? Because she was loyal. But Ruth maintained a flaming heart in the field of God. And because her heart stood aflame in the field of God, God turned her breakdown into a blessing. He turned her hardship into health. And he turned her loss into new life. Another word for loyalty is this. I'm almost done. Did you guys get something this morning? Another word for loyalty is faithful. Oh, thank God for faithful people. It makes me want to cry. I do cry often. I, I say, Lord, thank you for faithful, 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 faithful people. See, it was through loyalty and faithfulness that God rewarded Ruth. Ruth possessed faithful hands. She possessed a faithful heart. And that all equaled into a fruitful life. You say, Pastor, why are you talking to me about loyalty? Because if you want to be fruitful, you got to be loyal. If you want uh, this section, once again, I'm going to just preach to you guys in a minute. I wish someone over here would get a little bit more excited. Should I help them over here a little bit? If you want to be fruitful in your life, you got to be loyal. How about over here? If you want to be fruitful in your life, you got to be loyal. I love you. Can you tell I love you? But Ruth, Ruth had faithful hands. Look at your hands today. Are your hands faithful? See, nothing good happens in a person's life until they commit themselves fully. Listen, hear me and hear me clear. Please hear me. 
it's not just about putting in your gift. You've got to put in your soul. When I get up here to preach, I don't just, you know, I know some of you are probably like, this guy, I've been hearing him for a couple weeks. He says stuff that's crazy. He has these motions, and he's dramatic, and he runs around, and he sweats, and he spits. Listen, I preach and baptize at the same time. But you might trip out on me just a little bit. But understand, it's because when I preach, I don't just give you three points in a poem. I'm not up here trying to be cute. I'm not trying to impress nobody. I put my soul into this thing. I'm trying to get what's inside of me and put it inside of you in some way. She had faithful hands. In verse 3 of chapter 2, it says, Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was the family of Elimelech. Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered him, the Lord bless you. And notice this, this is the part I want you to see. Then Boaz said to a servant who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? <laughs> he must have saw how she was working. He must have saw how much she was going around the reapers and doing work. He knew that she, he knew she had a need, but he saw that she wasn't lazy. Come on, somebody. He saw that in her difficult times, she could have begged. She could have stood home, but she refused to hold back. She took her hands and put her hands to the plow. He noticed this woman didn't play the victim role. He noticed that this woman didn't have much, but she had a mind to serve. He noticed that nothing happened for Ruth until she got out into the field. And what am I saying to some of you right now? This is the time. If you want to see something happen, you've got to come out of your comfort zone. You've got to come out of your regular routine. You've got to get those hands dirty. You've got to get out on the field. And you, it may mean that you've got to get down on your knees and you may have to humble yourself a little bit. The Lord doesn't despise humble beginnings, but understand in due season. I said in due season. He will raise you up. Up if you don't lose heart and you stay loyal. Oh, I want you to touch your neighbor and tell him, humble yourself and stay loyal. One thing I learned a long time ago is that when you're good, they'll find you. You don't got to promote yourself on Instagram. You don't got to advertise. See, that's how you get Boaz's brothers. By advertising, advertising yourself on Facebook, advertising yourself on Instagram. That's how you end up with, oh, man, I want to say it. I can't say it. I can't say it. But you know what I'm thinking. That's how you end up with Boaz's brothers. But if you want Boaz, you got to humble yourself. You got to be loyal. You got to be committed. I don't want no scrubs. A scrubs is a guy that gets no love from me. Hang it. Some of you ladies have got to wait for God to send you a Boaz. Some of you men got to wait for God to send you a Ruth. Look for a woman that's humble. Look for a woman that's willing to serve. I feel a fresh anointing right now. Say, neighbor, don't go for Boaz's brothers. Some of you are mad at me right now. It's all right. It's all right. I love you. I love you. I love you. That's my job. I'm your father. I'm your Boaz. I'm here to teach you. I'm here to train you. I'm here to disciple you. I'm here to coach you. I got me a roost. She got a Boaz. We know what we're talking about. Thank you, Matthew. That's good stuff right there. <laughs> Someone say faithful hands. When you're good, they'll find you. All you got to do is activate your hands. Activate your hands. The second thing that Ruth had was she possessed 
a faithful heart. It wasn't just faithful hands. Oh, man, I hope the men are catching this. This is not a woman's message. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on. She had a faithful heart. Notice, well, I noticed not to be redundant, but notice she got noticed because her loyalty got her notice. Boaz was no dummy. Boaz was no faker, shaker. He was the real deal, holy field. Why am I preaching to you like this in the second service? I know you're just bringing it out of me this way. Boaz was the real deal. He was good looking. He had good hair. He had good teeth. Come on, somebody. He had a nice tunic. Double-breasted tunic. Come on, somebody. A little purple on it. Boaz was a leader. I believe that Boaz was a leader's leader. He was no half-stepper. He was no liar. He was no cheater. Boaz had something called character. And real, if you're from my, the streets I'm from, real, recognize real. Come on, somebody. This section, you fire me up, man. I, stop it, because I'm going to keep on preaching. Real, recognize real. Tell your neighbor, real, recognize real. Boaz walked in his field. He said, whose girl's that? Oh, but Boaz was no dummy. Because real leaders do their homework. He said, call her over here. Call that girl over here. I want to talk to her. And look what Boaz said to her. He says, it has been fully reported to me. Come on. You know what dating is? Gathering data. Some of you date without the data. You're dating, you don't even know what's in the Joker's past. You don't even know what he's involved in right now. You don't even know what she's doing right now. Don't get me started, man. This section, you're driving me crazy. I love you, though. I think we ought to talk about it. I think we ought to talk about it. He says, it's been fully reported to me all that you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you left your father and your mother in the land of your birth and have come to a people who did not know before. He said, the Lord repay you for your work. And a full reward. Someone say, a full reward. I said all that to tell you that the Lord favors the faithful. There is a reward for loyalty. Even Jesus said, he gave out a bunch of talents. And there was one servant he gave a talent to. He went on his trip. One had five, one had three. He gave the one one. He came back, five doubled it. Three doubled it, came back to the one. He says, wh wh where's my return? He says, well, I knew you to be a hard man. So I buried it. And what did he say? He said, you wicked and lazy servant, knowing I'm a hard man and knowing that I'm not just a God, but I'm an investor. And everything I put inside of you, I put it in there for a purpose. I put it in there for a reason. Not that you could sit on it and do nothing with it. I put it in you so you can multiply it and give my name glory wherever you go. I wonder if I got any people here today that say, I want my life to give God glory. 
There's a reward for loyalty. There's a reward for commitment. And understand that it's when it's your time. This is good. When it's your time, you'll get paid. That's why you need to stop being jealous of me. And stop being jealous of your neighbor. And when you hear people talking bad about people getting blessed, or why is it? You need to stop because the reason God's blessing me and the reason God's blessing them, it's because it's my time. I know what it is to get down on my knees. I know what it is to work hard in the field. I worked hard in my mother church. I worked hard in the training center. I worked hard. Don't get mad at me now that God is coming through on every word that he's given me. Just get happy. Because if God did it for me, you better know that God is going to do it for you next. Go, flow, Holy Spirit. It gets so good sometimes. You get mad about your enemies. You get mad about your haters. You get mad about your critics. It gets so good sometimes that your haters and your critics will bless you more than your friends. Because the Bible says the riches of the ungodly are stored up for the righteous. Touch your neighbor and tell him, be patient. Your time is coming. criticize me you can talk about me that's all right you're just publicizing me you're just making people that want to bless me show up you're just making people that like me get a little bit closer you're just making people that say there must be something on this man's life there must be something on that woman's life that I gotta get close don't hate me partner with me don't criticize me. Let's get on the same team and give the devil a black eye and advance the kingdom of God and grow this ministry and plant some churches around the world. Come on, somebody. Give, and it shall be given back to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. There's a reward for loyalty. Touch your neighbor and tell him, be loyal. Tell him, be loyal to your soil. And that's my final, final point. Man, I love, I, I feel like dancing. Because the final point is that root possessed a fruitful life. If you want to experience fruit and favor, you got to plant yourself long enough to see it. The problem with this generation is we only do things long enough to feel good. Then once we get what we want, we leave. But I came to tell you, you can't prosper that way. You got to be loyal to your soil. You got to be loyal to the vision. You got to be loyal to your church. You got to be loyal to your pastors. You got to be loyal to your husband. You got to be loyal to your wife. You got to be loyal to your kids. You got to be loyal to your calling. You got to be loyal to God Almighty. Are there any loyal people in the house? Are there any Ruths in the house? Any Ezra's in the house? How many are ready? How many are ready? Woo! Let me want to go. I'm waiting on this section. Because what this section does, everybody else in the church is going to do. Where are the loyal people? Where are all the roots? Where are all the Ezra's? Where are those that aren't afraid to get on their knees and do? Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Come on, build these altars. Look what the Lord has done. New people up here. Oh, I want to see some new people.
listen, listen. I'll be loyal to the he calls me right home. Say, I'll, I'll be loyal to the he calls me home. Say, I'll be loyal to the he calls me home. I'll be loyal to the he calls me home. Somebody say loyalty. Look at three people, tell them loyalty. Play softly. I think sometimes, as they play soft, we don't understand the implications of loyalty and disloyalty. Let me, let me tell you something here that the Lord showed me in this message. I didn't bring it out in the first, but I'll bring it out now. Disloyalty breaks things. But loyalty preserves things. When you look at the story of Ruth and Naomi, it was, it was written by a prophet named Samuel. What was Samuel responsible for? Anointing who? David. But at the end of Ruth, Samuel writes, then Naomi took the child. They had a son, Ezra and Ruth. They had a son. It says, then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom and became a nurse to him. Also, the neighbor women gave him a name, saying, there is a son born to Naomi, and they shall call his name Obed. Look at this. Obed, he is the father of Jesse. And Jesse is the father of who? And David is the bloodline of Jesus. All because of loyalty. If this third wave generation is going to take this vision around the world like we're believing you to, it's going to take loyalty. The same loyalty that Ruth gave to Naomi is the same loyalty this generation has to give to their spiritual parents. Because loyalty preserves the bloodline. The famine came. Have we been in a famine? Have we been in a famine? Have we been in a crazy plague? Have we lost things? Have we been hit? Have people been pushed out of the church? The famine did all it could to destroy the bloodline of Jesus. Without Jesus, we won't be here. But one woman's loyalty changed the whole history of the human world. Wow. 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 Mom, you never know what you're fighting for. Well, this marriage is so hard, but you never know what you're fighting for. Dad, you never know what you're fighting for. Loyalty. Lord, give us faithful hands, faithful hearts, and a fruitful life. If you say this word was for me, just lift your hands wherever you might be. Jesus, we're ready, Lord. And if you're here and you say, I've been disloyal to the Lord, I want to come back to Jesus. I want to serve him with a loyal heart. Lift your hand. Let me see your hand if, if that's you. Say, I want to serve with a loyal heart. God bless you. God bless you. I see a family member said, you're putting that arm up, girl. I brought you here to get saved. Praise God. That's what we need, loyalty. Come on. Anyone else? You want to serve the Lord with a loyal heart. Let me see those hands. You want to serve the Lord with a loyal God bless you. A loyal heart, loyal heart. Let me tell you, if you stay loyal, God's going to bless your bloodline. God's going to bless your family. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I want to serve you with a loyal heart. Cleanse me with your blood. 
forgive me my sin. I've been disloyal to you and to your plan. But Lord, I want to make it right today. And I believe you died for me. And your blood cleanses me. And Lord, you rose from the grave so that I could have eternal life. Lord, heal me. Heal my family. Heal my bloodline. I want to be fruitful. I want to prosper. I want to be everything you call me to be. Now just lift your hands all over this place and let's sing this song to the Lord.